So the next congenital heart disease we're going to talk about is the PDA or the patent ductus arteriosus. Okay, PDA or the patent ductus arteriosus. Now, always remember in patent ductus arteriosus, there is a connection. Okay, there's a functioning connection between these two important blood vessels. So number one, we have the pulmonary artery and we have the descending aorta. Now, the ductus arteriosus theoretically closes, okay? Now, what does the ductus arteriosus become? Okay, what does the ductus arteriosus become? So the ductus arteriosus closes and it becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, it becomes the ligamentum arteriosum, okay? So please take note of that. Now, location-wise, I just want to highlight this. The ductus arteriosus arises from the pulmonary artery and joins the aorta just distal. So the origin of the left subclavian artery. So I want you to memorize that. Okay, just distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery. So please take note of that. Now here, highlighted in yellow, so we have here the ductus arteriosus. So you see there the functional communication. Now I would like to highlight that there's an inverse relationship between the gestational age and the birth weight. Okay, gestational age and birth weight with the incidence of PDA. So what does that mean? The more preterm the neonate is, the more, the lower the birth weight is, the higher the incidence of PDA, okay? Now, this is what I want you to remember by heart. This is the one that's most likely gonna come out in the boards. So always remember the association of PDA with maternal rubella infection. Now, a lot of students make a mistake here. My question is going to be simple. What is the most common manifestation of maternal rubella? syndrome. Many students would answer patent ductus arteriosus. Be careful. That is incorrect. The most common, the most common is sensory neural hearing loss or sensory neural deafness. Okay. Sensory neural hearing loss or sensory deafness. That is the most common manifestation or presentation of maternal rubella. Now, I, lift, I, I made a tabulation based on a couple of paragraphs in your Nelson's. So why is there an increased incidence of patent ductus arteriosus in premature infants? So this is the rationale here, and I want you guys to be familiar with. So in premature infants, I want you to remember the smooth muscle wall of the preterm ductus okay, is less responsive to oxygen. Therefore, it is most, it is least likely rather, it is least likely to constrict after birth. Remember, after the baby is delivered, the first, first breaths of life, okay, would stimulate the constriction and closure of the ductus arteriosus. And this happens at the time of birth. So, so always remember that. That is why there is a higher incidence of PDA in preterm babies. Now, permanent closure of the ductus arteriosus is usually complete by eight weeks or two months after birth. Okay, so permanent closure 
of the ductus arteriosus is usually complete by eight weeks after birth. Now question, what pain reliever would you tell a pregnant patient to avoid during pregnancy? Okay, what pain reliever? Okay, okay, very good. There's two I want you to mention. Okay, it's ibuprofen and endomethacin. Okay, ibuprofen and endomethacin because these two pain relievers will inhibit what? It will inhibit, fill in the blanks. Okay, it inhibits prostaglandin. Okay, it inhibits prostaglandin. So please take note of that. The role of prostaglandin is very important for maintaining the patency of the ductus arteriosus. Helps maintain the patency of the ductus arteriosus in utero. Now, this is a must know. It's a mortal sin not to know this. What is the classic murmur? Okay. In patent ductus arteriosus, it is the machinery like murmur. Okay. Machinery like murmur. Now, let's play around with your memory banks. I'm going to give you a case. I'm going to specify a murmur. Okay. The murmur is a mid systolic click. Give me your diagnosis. Best answer for mid systolic click. Okay. Best answer here is mitral valve prolapse. Okay. So mid systolic click, this is mitral valve prolapse. This is MVP, which is also known as Barlow syndrome. It's also known as floppy valve syndrome. And I hope you guys are aware that the pathogenesis here is mix, mixomatous degeneration. Mixomatous degeneration. So please take note of this. Mid systolic click, mitral valve prolapse. Now I'm gonna give you a case. Uh, when you go to the actual boards, let it be the US LME, let it be the Indian boards, let it be the Canadian boards, let it be the Philippine boards or the thigh boards. There's always a segment there that's gonna go clinical vignettes or case scenarios on you. So let me give you another case here of a young man, let's make him 26, year old, 26 years old. He stands at 6'11". Okay, he's lanky. Okay, he was brought in for severe chest pain. And eventually rushed to the ER. Okay, the severe chest pain was a tearing chest pain. There was hypotension, okay, in the upper extremities there was hypertension in the lower extremities, okay? Give me your working impression, okay? Now, I want you to think deep. I want you to think very deep because you are a CDB student, okay? Always remember, you are a different breed. Yes, aortic dissection is most likely here, Coartation of the aorta is a possibility because of the difference in the blood pressures. But please remember this in coartation of the aorta, there's hypertension in the upper X. There is a femoral delay or weak pulses in the lower extremities. So please be careful. Now, why do you think the examiner, in this case, Dr. Toom, mentioned the height, mentioned the description that he is lanky? 
what am I trying to point at? That this is most likely a patient with Marfan syndrome. And what is the usual cause of death or morbidity in Marfan syndrome? It is a aortic dissection. And that severe chest pain, which leads to hypotension, okay, that is most likely aortic dissection. And what does the patient have? Marfan syndrome. Now, before I move to the next slide, I want to check up if you are my students. I'm giving you a case of Marfan syndrome. Okay. What is the structural protein that is deficient? Okay. Very good. I love you, mga anak. You make me proud. This is fibrillin 1. Okay. This is fibrillin 1. This is how we exercise and prepare for the boards. While everyone panics, everyone burns out, we in CDB, pwede naman magpanic, okay? But we, we try to regulate it. We're going to make studying fun. So I mentioned the structural protein fibrillin. Now, what if I tell you this same patient, the 26-year-old lanky kid who came in with chest pain, also had history of blurring of vision. What would your physical exam finding be or diagnosis? Okay, this is still going to be Marfan syndrome. Presenting with what? Subluxation of the lens or ectopia lentis. Okay, there's subluxation. That's why there is blurring of vision. This is not Ehlers-Danlos. Ehlers-Danlos does not classically present with optha findings. Now, one last, make me proud. We're going to crack this boards. You hear ectopia lentis in the board exam. Walang choice na Marfan syndrome. What is your diagnosis? Okay, very good. This is homocystinuria. Okay, this is now homocystinuria. Okay, now CDB guru guide. Okay, what does Dr. Toom want you to bring to the boards? What is the medical management of patent ductus arteriosus? So we simply give prostaglandin synthase inhibitors, particularly endomethacin. If endomethacin is not in the choices, I want you to remember, you can also answer ibuprofen. So please memorize this. So for the medical management, we mentioned the endomethacin and the ibuprofen. However, the definitive management, okay, the definitive management, okay, take note, is surgery. So it's going to be ligation or division of the ductus arteriosus. Okay, so careful with that word, definitive management or definitive treatment. It's surgery. So that ends our module on patent ductus arteriosus.